Hello everybody, Daniel Gaines here, back to do another video in Juliet Parker Civil Matters. Uh, this one I will tie in and tie together everything that has happened so far in the other videos. Uh, if you remember in the other videos, from the other videos, one of them, uh, yesterday's in fact, Juliet, we went over her restraining order attempts where she's claiming I'm a I have a severe drug and alcohol problem and everything else. I'm violent and abusive and all these other things that she thought can think of to say. Well, I was going to show all the past uh, background reports I had, had done over the years, but decided instead of showing a bunch of papers that are going to say the same thing, I'll just show you this one. It's the most recent, as you can already see from the date. My name, Daniel Eugene Gaines, date of birth, it's the last four of my socials, obviously removed, but all jurisdictions searched, including sex offender registries, dated 4-28-2020, so it's recent, and if we go, before we get down there too much, let everybody see this. You come look down here, no criminal or sex offender records found for this individual. There's the second page of it. As you can see, just a bunch of real estate here. Okay. Another thing I'm going to show is, I'm not going to show them all. I'll show them let, them, let them all be seen on the video, but I'm not going to actually read them all. Uh, some friends of mine, people that know me, wrote some declarations back in 2015. And they were submitted to the courts in Mason County. And we're going to go through, I'm going to show you, but I'm going to let you, but I'm actually going to read a couple. Dustin says, I have known Daniel Gaines for 20 years. He's really good with kids. He's been around my nieces and nephews and they love him. I would trust him with my kids any day. 20 years he knew me and this was five years ago. Okay. Dustin is the uncle of Destiny. Destiny just actually the other day had her third child, her first little girl. But this is what Destiny said five years ago. I, Destiny Ann Phillips, have known Daniel Gaines since I could ever remember. He is a great person and knows the right advice to give anyone. He can make me smile anytime I'm down. I would definitely let my Uncle Daniel around my kid. That's from Des. Now, she's not blood related. She just, I'm that. It's my niece, and it, there's that's just all there is to it. Here's one. I'm not gonna read this one because it's lengthy, but you can see the date: five thirty fifteen. These are all copies. Uh. The, like I said, it was all submitted to the courts in Mason County in 2015. Phone numbers are what's down here, whited out, in case anybody's wondering. Uh, some numbers are the same, so it, I just went ahead and covered up the numbers, at least for the most part. James Curtis, we call him Junior, but that's Destiny's other uncle, another one of her uncles. Known me 20 years, really good with my kids. Uh, I've known Daniel Gaines for 20 years. He's really good with kids. He's never harmed my kids. Was always very good around mine, and yes, I would definitely trust him around my kids. His kids, both his boys, call me Uncle Daniel. William, call him Billy. Well, I call him Willie, but his name, he goes by Billy. This is Destiny's dad. Destiny Phillips, the one that I already showed you. This is her father. I, William Jason Phillips Sr., has known Daniel Gaines 26 years. He's a great person to be around, always smiling and laughing, always been great with my kids, and they call him Uncle Daniel. All his kids do. Every one of them. All of them. And his kids that have kids, his two oldest daughters, their kids will call me Uncle Daniel as well. Here's another one. I, Jason Miles, have known Daniel Gaines for about 22 years. I've seen him take good care of many kids over the years. He was he has also watched my own daughter a few times and has always been good to her. Daniel is a really great person, and I know that he will take good care of his kids. 
And I know that some people are going to say, oh, well, these are all people who've known you for a long time. They're your friends. They're, of course, they're going to cover for you, blah, 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 whatever the case may be. Well, okay, then to that. My name is Chad Taylor. I have known Daniel Gaines for around 10 years. I met Daniel at work, and he started coming over to my house after work often. Yeah, me and Chad hung out a lot. We had a lot in common. He's a cool, he's a cool dude. A lot of times just to play with my two-year-old son. Dayton was always fun. Other times, we have been to a lot of family events such as carnivals, parks, and swimming pools, and Daniel is beyond nice to all of the children around. He used to babysit for me, and I would always trust him to watch he used to babysit for me, and I would trust him to watch anyone's child any age. And I did. I watched Dayton a few, several times for Chadley. Dayton, like I said, Dayton was a cool kid. I love Dayton to death. I mean, I'm a sucker for kids anyway. Always have been, but yeah. Here's another one. I, Benjamin Tucker, have known Daniel Gaines for a little over 10 years. He is a very nice guy and has never shown any anger to any child. I have seen him around my buddy Chad Taylor's son, Dayton. Dayton loved him. He would always play with Dayton every time he would go to Chad's. I have a two-month-old son myself, and he is great with him. I would trust him 100% with my child. He is great with kids. Okay. Yep, these are some for people that I've known a while still, too. But we're getting there. Amy's knew me for about seven years at this point. I've watched her kids. She even still to this day. I she'd still trust me around her kids. And then here's another one. Thomas knew me about three years in 2015. Trust me around his kids. Amber is the mother of Thomas's children. So obviously she know me around the same time. She said the same thing. Still, still know her to this day, and it's all the same thing. I've known Daniel for three years. He is good with kids. I trust him with my kids. He's never seen aggressive, and I've never seen a child scared of him. All my kids, my nieces and nephews, like being around him. Her nieces and nephews, Amber's, that David is. Uh, married to Amber's sister, so our nieces and nephews are him. I've known Daniel Gaines for the past four years. I lived next door to him for two years. His kids and mine have played many times. Daniel never got upset enough to yell or show rage. Always talked to the kids instead of yelling. And you can see legit signatures and everything. I mean, this is all filed with the courts. Known me for three years. Wouldn't that see me around his nieces and nephews many times, has no issues, would trust me around kids and everything else. His sister actually wrote one for me, and for her kids. I mean, as you can see, it's all... And that's just that's that's just those ones. They're, you're only allowed, in the state of Washington, you're only allowed so many declarations from people. So I have to kind of pick and choose which ones I want to have right one because, again, there's only so many allowed. And I don't want it to just be people that I've known for 20, 30 years or so. I want there to be people who's known me most of my life, damn near all my life. I want there to be people who's known me about half the time. And then I want there to be people who's known me a lot less time. That way there's a wide range of people and different stages that they've uh, – different stages of the relationship, meaning as far as different amounts of time, uh, to write things that way it can't just, that way nothing can be said, you know, because while it can't, Oh, well, the people who've known him forever are going to cover for him. All these people have only known me, have only known me a few years. They're not, it's, it's not the same type of relationship. They've got nothing to gain. They've got nothing. You know what I'm saying? So that's why I went with those ones. Uh, I have some more that's going to be getting filed this time around with things as well. Uh, I left my fiance and her families out of this uh, for now intentionally, but I'll get back to, I'll get into those later on down the line with things. Uh, I mean, yeah, it, it's, it, as you can see, I mean, there's, there's a lot of claims that she makes that just aren't backed up by the proof. 
You know what I'm saying? And I'm not sitting here trying to say I'm perfect. I'm far from perfect. I'm human. You know what I'm saying? I, I've got my I've got my issues just like anybody else does. But I've never been the monster that she's claimed I have been. There is one time where things did get physical between us. And I've admitted to it. I've always admitted to it and never denied it. It was the incident while she was seven months pregnant. However, she was not thrown or pushed down the stairs. We lived in an apartment in Baton Rouge, Louisiana. Whenever we lived upstairs in the apartment, whenever you walk in the door, the door was on the ground floor. You walk in the door, you're in our apartment. You have to go up the stairs. I had my back against the door. We were drinking that night. She was drunk. Her dad's a doctor, said it was okay. So we went out drinking with the older couple that lived underneath us and over one apartment. We come home and she got upset about something. I don't even remember what it was. It was something petty, uh, pregnancy hormones and stuff like that. Uh, some know how that goes. Some can relate to that. But uh, she wanted to leave. And you can actually look this up. In 2003, there was a serial rapist running around Baton Rouge. It wasn't safe. She's drunk, seven months pregnant. I'm not letting her walk around at 3 o'clock, 3.30 in the morning, whatever time it was. I was telling her. You go upstairs, go to bed, I'll leave, I'll go sleep in the truck. Because we were we had gotten into an argument. And I'll go sleep in the truck, you stay here so I know you're safe. There's a serial rapist running around. She didn't like that. So she started hitting me. And it was one of them things, it's not the first time she had done it, but she was hitting me in the chest. And, and she couldn't hit me hard enough to hurt me if she tried. So it's one of the things, I just going to let her burn herself out, hope she went upstairs and went to sleep, because the other few times where she had hit me like that, she'd burn herself out, and then that was the end of it. Well, in the process of it this time, one of them punches happened to catch me in the mouth, and that's when I reacted. My instinctual reaction was simply to push her away. I pushed her away from me when she punched me in the mouth. She landed in a perfect sitting position, either on the second or third step from the bottom, Legs bent at a perfect 90 degree angle. A perfect seated position is how she landed. It is possible she might have hit her lower back on a step behind her. I can't attest to that. But it's not like she was shoved with a great deal of force because she didn't go flying into the step. She landed in a perfect seated position. Didn't even go flying back or anything. I mean, she just landed in a seated position. And that's when I turned around and walked out the door. Walked out the door. Had every intention of going to the truck and going to bed. And then she walked out the door about a minute behind me and went to the neighbor's house. So about an hour later, I finally went back into the apartment, and then I went upstairs and went to sleep. Yeah, I pushed her away from me, and I still feel bad about it, to be honest with you. I still feel bad that I actually pushed her. I pushed a female, and then what's worse is she was pregnant when I did it. However, if she wouldn't have punched me in the mouth, I would have just stood there and let her punch herself out, hit me in the chest, and then she could have went to bed, and I would have walked out the apartment, and that would have been that. But getting hit in the mouth and an instinct reaction... I can't help how I reacted. You know what I'm saying? It's one of the things that, do I regret it? Yeah. Do I feel bad and wish I wouldn't have put my hands on her? Well, yeah, obviously I wish I wouldn't have pushed her, but she shouldn't have hit me in the mouth. And it, thankfully it's all it was, was a push. I didn't punch her back out of instinct or anything else. I pushed her away from me. And it just, it's, it's funny how it's morphed to being thrown down the stairs, but y'all seen the restraining orders. One point she was pushed. One point she was thrown one point she went to the ER over, whereas for all the other years she never did. I mean, it just y'all can make up your own mind on it, but you've seen all the information, you've seen what other people had to say about me, and I mean, you've seen the restraining orders and the things that she put in my child's head. How does that all relate and how does that all tie in together? Well, as you can see from the restraining order attempts. Clearly, 2015 was the issue where she really went off the rails with all her claims. I guess she completely forgot about everything else she had said before. And that's where she started going and making just everything up under the sun as she could. The problem is, is that it's a lot. most of those allegations were never said before. And then she turned around and put all that stuff into our child's head. Well, putting all that stuff into our child's head, knowing it's not true, that's parental alienation. That's malicious mother syndrome. She did all that just to cause irreparable or attempt to cause irreparable harm between me and my daughter's relationship. That way, if there ever came a point where I did get to talk to my daughter, my daughter wouldn't want anything to do with me. 
And that's the battle I'm facing right now. I've got to try and get a child who thinks the worst of me to at least give me an opportunity and get to know me so she can learn that it's not true. She doesn't have to listen and believe anything I tell her. Just get to know me and see for yourself. I'd like for her to know the truth, but it's one of them things that I mean, it's, it's going to be up to her what she does with the information. So, I mean, I can't force her to learn the truth. I can just hope that if she doesn't want to go back through all the, all the information and, and all the lies that she's been told, I can respect that. But at least let me show you that it's not true. You know what I'm saying? It's one of those type of things. Like, I feel I shouldn't have to be punished because my daughter was lied to all her life. I shouldn't have to be punished because... Juliet decided to intentionally keep my kid from me and bail with her and run with her all my daughter's life. In the documents from the CPS documents, you've seen where my daughter's talking about in a five-year span, they moved from Washington to Texas to Washington to Texas to Washington. Uh, no, hold on. It was from went from Washington to Texas to Washington to Texas to Colorado to Washington. And they're talking about possibly moving again seven times, potentially six already have happened The seventh potential in a five year span. There's also court documents that will be being discussed at, in a later video where it's talking about in a manner, a matter of a couple of months, three to five moves, literally in a two or three month span. And she tries to say, I'm intentionally not a part of my child's life. Well, it's hard to be a part of your kid's life whenever your child's mother is bouncing all over the freaking country with your kid and you literally don't know from one day to the next where your child is. You cannot establish a relationship that way, let alone keep one going. But but it's my fault. Okay, the documents all say it all. It's just sad that CPS, simply because I had the audacity to ask them why they were violating and abusing my rights and violating the law... They're trying to say that I'm the bad guy now, even though they're the ones that presented the documents that prove beyond any doubt that the parental alienation and malicious mother syndrome are actually at play here. This is going to be interesting. It's going to be a fun challenge, uh, especially being the father in the state of Washington. But it's a battle that I'm not going to quit on. I'm not going to give up on. And this time, there's... There's going to be things that are going to take place on the back end. I can't get too much into those details at this time, but it's that case is actually going to be laid out while laying out this case because it's all tied together. But as far as it goes, it's all I'm going to do for this video. I want to try and keep it a little bit shorter than the last few. Thank you, thank you everybody who's taking the time to watch these. I appreciate it. I greatly appreciate it being shared. This is stuff that needs to be told. Uh, I know it's not the greatest videos. I'm new to this. I don't pretend to be tech savvy or anything like that. Not at all. So it's kind of crude videos, but everything is based in fact. Everything is based in, in, in logic. It's all honest. It's all court documents. Anybody can go get to see these documents. It's all public record. I'm putting case numbers out there with the documents when I show them at all so that I can be fact checked and everything. But we do need to help raise awareness. Uh, about father's rights in this country fathers are treated as second-class citizens and in some cases well maybe it is earned and deserved by that particular parent but there's far 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 too many cases where there's no reason or no cause for it they just get victimized all because of a broken system and it's not just fathers let's be fair there's some mothers that are on the receiving end of this too it is primarily the fathers so that's why it's considered a father's rights issue but I mean, parents get vilified and and get screwed over by the system every day in this country, and that's that's not something that should be happening. If you're a parent and you want to be a part of your kid's life, you should have that option. I mean, nobody should be told you're not allowed to be a part of your kid's life simply because the other parent doesn't want you to be. That that should never be an option and never be allowable. But that's all information for and stuff for later videos. So I thank y'all for your time and your patience. Y'all have a good night. Stay safe.